Hey y'all, this video is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. Um, make sure you check the link in the description box. I'll leave a link where you can get your first box from Mystery Tackle Box for as little as $10. Today we're gonna ask some, uh, answer some subscriber questions. If you have a question for me you'd like to see me answer here on the channel, make sure you put it in the comment section. I'm not sure why I made that so difficult last time. You don't have to send me an email or DM. Put it right here in the comment section and uh, I'll, if it's a good one, I'll try to answer it here on the channel. Ooh, that verb, it scares me to death. Uh, wants to get big in the fishing industry. Um, I don't like that motivation there, to get big. Um, I hope that means that you just want to fish. Your motivation needs to be that you just want to fish, however that means, or you just want to fish tournaments. To get big sounds like clout chasing to me. So uh, my advice would probably be to sit down. That's a bad, bad motivation. I wouldn't say want to get big. What is big? What is small? I don't like that at all. So yeah, this language scared me a lot. I gotta be honest, the part about um, wanting to get big, I really, really hate that because it sounds like it's clout chasing. It sounds like uh, everything that you don't need to be focused on. If I could do one thing right now, I definitely would change your focus to um, to fishing. It doesn't sound like that focus is fishing. It sounds like it's mostly about um, getting some type of respect or clout or re, uh, some type of rapport with people, which everybody wants to be like, including me. But um, I think you'd be better off if your if your if your direction towards your passion is more based on, dude, what do I got to do to be a f to fish every day. So, uh, but I think that question, and I'm sure the people listening, they want to know, dude, how, how can I turn pro? What do I need to do? What are the steps I need to take? I feel like I answered this question so many times on this channel. I show, share my story. I share ways you can do better. And um, I don't know if it just falls on deaf ears or it's just that, new, that many new people coming to my channel. But I'll try to do it again here. We'll see the best. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the best way that I can tell you and mainly share some of my experiences with trying to become a professional angler. Um, there's three things that you're going to need. I feel like there's really three parts that are, that are very important when it comes to becoming a professional fisherman. Uh, you need all three of them. You may not always have equal parts of all three. At some point, you're going to have one or more of the other, but all three work together to make this professional fishing platform. Uh, you're going to need skill set. You got to be able to catch fish. That's number one and most important by far. You got to be got to have a skill set and be able to catch fish. Um, you are going to have to have time. That means managing time. That means you're going to have to have some extra time because it's going to be a time period where you're juggling both a normal life and trying to fish at the same time. Um, and thirdly, you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to have a job. <laughs> you have to have a job finances managing those finances is a huge part of becoming a uh, professional angler so let's um let's reverse and go deeper into each one of those that i, that I just I just mentioned as i said all three work together to make this thing work to make the machine work it's sort of like a carburetor where you need fuel you need gas uh i mean you need gas you need air and you need spark to make the engine run that's the same way it is with professional fishing. You need time, you need money, and you need skill set. So they all three work to make the same thing happen. Skill set. How are you going to get the skills? Me just telling you that you got to have skills probably doesn't really help you. Let's go deeper. What? How are you going to get the skills? What do you need to do? Let me share some experiences with you that, uh, that really probably held me back for a while. Uh, when it comes to skill set, I would just... Um, I would consider where you live. I would pay really close attention to whatever tournament trail you decide to fish. Play, pay really close attention to where those tournament trails go. Uh, they almost every organization goes to the same places on a, on a two to three year basis. They may not go every year, but in a three year time period, they're going to go more than once, almost everywhere. Pay attention to those fisheries. If they're going somewhere that, let's just say for me, it was grass. Almost all the fisheries are going to be grass fisheries. Well, if they've got grass fisheries, you probably need to start picking 
places where you live that have grass so that you're familiar with the baits and techniques that go along with grass fishing. If you notice that the trail or wherever you fish, the division of wherever you fish, or your BFLs, Toyota series, opens, whatever you decide to fish, you notice they go to a lot of Tennessee River places, probably get really good at learning how to fish techniques that are popular on the Tennessee River. Ledge fishing, throwing Carolina rigs, football jigs, offshore fishing, probably start to hone your skill set towards that. Um, it's really, really important for you, especially early on, to take all these, all this big conglomerate of lures and techniques and get you about two or three and become really, really, really good and efficient at it. Everybody talks about being versatile in bass fishing, but we always basket being versatile and knowing every lure and every technique there is. They can be that, that can be being versatile, but being versatile also means I'm a really good crankbait fisherman. I have a lot of confidence in throwing a crankbait. Learn how to throw deep divers, how to throw them when it's cold, how to throw shallow divers, how to throw, uh, how to pre-spawn fish for with a crankbait, how to fish for post-spawn fish with a crankbait. Learn how to use that one technique in a bunch of different scenarios. That's going to help you when you start traveling around because in two or three days, you don't have time to learn every technique and explore every possibility of catching a fish. You got about two or three things that you're really good and really proficient at. You can take those, apply those to a couple different fisheries. You're going to be better off. You're going to skyrocket up, up the standings and your career is going to go a lot faster than what it took me. Try that. I promise you that'll help you when it comes to building skill sets, being able to catch fish. Second thing I talked about, uh, let's talk about time. I think time is very, very important. I think one of the things that's over uh, that that we put a lot of a lot of uh, um, I don't know the right word. We give give time on the water way too much credit. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that I'm going to tell you you need to fish every day because I know you don't. You don't need to fish every day. It helps in the early stages so you can get familiar with the equipment and become a better caster and so forth. Uh, I think I put way too much emphasis on being on the water early on. I wish I would have put more emphasis on just becoming better at certain things, which kind of going back to the skill set thing that we just talked about. Time on the water is really only going to get you so far. Find you some places that are productive to getting you to where you want to be. It's going back to the first conversation we had. So keep in mind like where I live, I live on Savannah River Lake, Blueback Herring Lake. I can fish all I want on Blueback Herring Lake. It's never going to help me when I go to Lake Okeechobee. In fact, it's going to hurt me because the skills and the techniques and the lures and baits that I'm going to be building confidence in on Lake Harwell is not going to help me at Lake Okeechobee. But I could go down to Santee Cooper where they've got grass flats and trees and it's just these huge massive flats of you know two, three, four foot of water, just like Okeechobee. That might help me when I go down there. So learn to spend your time wisely. Make your fishing trips with purpose. Just fishing, just to be fishing will burn your resources and will waste your time. Study tournament results from other places. Use your time studying tournament results on places that you're going to be going and competing in. Um, there was something else that I wanted to say about this. I can't remember what it was right off the tip of my tongue. I'm just going as, as, uh, as things hit me. But I do know this. Time on the water is not everything. Preparing your mind and your equipment, uh, studying the right places, the right techniques to get you to where you're trying to go. Remember, you're not just fishing like your other buddies are. You're trying to go somewhere with your fishing. That's what this conversation is about. You're trying to take this passion that you have and go somewhere with it. You're not having fun, so you've got a different mindset. Spending time on the water has to be purposeful for you if you're trying to become a professional. So time on the water means a lot. It's not the whole pie. You can't build an apple pie with only apples. You cannot build an apple pie. You cannot bake an apple pie with only apples. There's other things that go with the pie to make it an apple pie. So just like it's called apple pie, but 
you need crust and you need i don't know what you do butter and baking soda and all these other things that you put in a pie is sugar even though it's called apple pie you gotta have all those things to make the pie work right same thing is gonna be with your fishing time on the water fishing the actual aspect of fishing and catching fish is a big part of it but there's other parts that you got to have with it make sure you build spend some of your time building those things another thing about time this is what i wanted to talk to you about there'll be times where you have to park your boat um which gets into the third part where we talk about money and finances these two kind of go together there'll be times where you got to park your boat uh just use myself for an experience uh for an example i didn't get to fish all the time i spent a lot of time working i i used to pick five tournaments that i could fish during the year that i that i that were priority my bfls were my priority i fished other tournaments if i could and if i had the money and the time and the resources that was second my number one priority was bfls because i knew that bfls could take me to a regional which could take me to all american which could take me to the everstart series or the toyota series which could take me to the flw tour at the time i knew those tournaments were going to take me somewhere they were going somewhere most of the tournaments that you guys are fishing are great to start but at some point fishing the club tournaments and fishing the weekend get together tournaments there's it's a dead end road it's only gonna take you so far so those tournaments have to become second priority or no priority your your priority has to become tournaments that will take you somewhere with that being said there will be times if those tournaments are priority you're going to fish your five bfls six bfls the rest of the year you're going to work you're going to do extra work you're going to work at your job you're going to do overtime um you're going to do whatever you got to do to get money to fish the next season if you got time got extra time you got extra money then go jump in some of the other fun tournaments but for me i didn't have enough money i couldn't fish everything i had to pick and choose what i could do so my tournaments usually ended in like may or june and from june until the end of the year i would prioritize just working and making money because i knew i wasn't making a lot of money and i had to get my money ahead so when fishing came here and i wanted to fish that i could spend my time and money and resources fishing and not working again so you got to kind of plan ahead which gets me to my next point if you think you want to be a fisherman i would start thinking about uh what you can do for a living on your own where you can make your own schedule whatever talents and skills you got start to use that to make money with i think it's very unlikely you'll probably be able to work as an employee and become a professional fisherman you're gonna to have to start thinking more entrepreneurial wise that doesn't have to be fancy you don't have to own a walmart owning a business doesn't mean that you have a brick and mortar store and you have 10 employees it might be just you and yourself uh washing cars it might be just you yourself raking leaves I've talked about this a lot and a lot of people hate to hear me talk about it, but it is what it is. It, it's, it could be something simple. Some of you guys are like really good at fabrication and welders and so forth. Take that skill. Usually welders are really good about this anyway, but take those skills and make some extra money. Um, you're going to have to start thinking that way because it's very unlikely that anybody's going to let you off of work four to six weeks a year, especially for teens. If you're 50, 60 years old, maybe you built up the time, but who wants to wait to 50, 60 years old to try to be a professional fisherman? You need to try to do it now. So I'm telling you, you better start carving out you a path where you design your work schedule, you design the time, your workload, how much money you make. You don't want to be capped into a job to where they tell you when you're going to come, where you're going to go, how much you're going to make. Uh, you don't want to be capped into that. You want to be able the freedom to be able to make as much money as you want, you want the freedom to be able to turn down work or accept work, pick the work that you want, pick the work that's gonna make you be able to spend as much time as you need to be able to spend. So I would definitely be able to think, be starting to think about starting some type of small business. It doesn't have to be grand, doesn't have to be big, something where you can make $500 extra a month, a couple times during the year, not even all year, but if you can make five hundred dollars here five hundred dollars there two hundred dollars there fifty dollars there thirty dollars there it's going to help you and you're going to have to have it because nobody's going to help you nobody's going to sponsor you nobody's going to do anything really for you at this level somebody might donate money to you but you're probably not going to get sponsorship sponsorship is a trade 
I'll give you this for my trade on attention. I'll give you this for my trade and my knowledge about baits, etc., etc. Somebody just giving you money is a donation. You might be able to get a donation here or there, but most likely you probably won't. So uh, that is my uh, that's my advice, information, experience that I can give to you guys that want to become a professional fisherman. Please make sure you go check out the link in the description box. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this uh, for the rest of the week at least. Maybe we'll make it like a once a month thing where for, for a week we do nothing but answer questions. Don't know why I made it so hard last time. If you got a question you want to ask, put it in the comment section of this video. Makes it a whole lot easier for me to find you guys questions. Um, try to keep the questions a question. I don't need a backstory of I'm 13 years old and I went to school and I live in Illinois. Catch some fish sometimes. You got a 14. I don't even know that. What's your question? My question is the same for everybody, no matter what your backstory is. So uh, keep the question so I can get straight to it. If I get if I see a story, I probably don't have time to read that one. All right. Uh, Mystery Taco Box. Check the link in the description box. Thanks for sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm going to do some laps on my dirt bikes while I don't have any kids. All right. Appreciate it. This is what I do for fun, guys. Thanks, guys.